computer. <laughs> yeah, I figured it out. <laughs> and I got to say that right after I started recording. So it'll start with that. <laughs> so proud. Uh, very fitting. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I have my Zoom set up to like lock the room, but we're we're at time. So uh, cool. Let's let's jump up. Oh, let's see when we I guess we'll let David go. One more. Sneaking in. Ah, oh, we got David. Perfect. <laughs> Round us out at six. Awesome. Perfect, perfect. A nice small group, and hopefully we can have some fun and chat and laughter. So welcome back to the Enchanted Playground. Uh, so let's start off like we usually do. If I could have everyone uh, mute and turn off your cameras. All right. I'm just going to set up audio real quick here. There we go. Perfect. All right, everyone. So our screens are off. And if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. Today, I want you to imagine a dandelion. Not a young one that's yellow, but one that seeds are ready to blow away in the wind. I want you to think of stresses and all of your anxieties and all the, the junk that's out there. And at least for now, attach them to the seeds of this dandelion. Just take a big, deep breath in and blow it out, sending those stresses, anxieties, and challenges away with the seeds of the flower. You awaken in a dark room under some really comfy covers. Flannel. Yeah, that's what it feels like. And you look out the window, but you're up higher than usual looking out over the playground and there's a blanket of undisturbed snow over everything. You hear in the background, you can kind of hear some footsteps tapping around. There's obviously a lot of people downstairs. That's, that's where the action is. And then a scent hits you. Fresh baked bread. Your mouth waters just a little bit. You realize you're actually quite hungry. And you look over and you notice some cozy slippers on the floor to slip into. As you meander down the circular wooden staircase, every other step creaks beneath your feet. And another scent hits your nose. It's your favorite meal from childhood. Maybe it's spicy peppers being roasted, freshly brewed coffee, toasted nuts, or any other aroma you can imagine is filling the air. The scent is intoxicating, but it's different for every single person here. When you arrive downstairs, you see your playmates are finding various cooking stations spread about. And you spot yours across the way. You know, there's a colorful apron awaiting you there with your name across the front and your favorite cooking apparatus in front of you, whatever that might be. Maybe it's a hot pot or an open flame grill or an air fryer. Food induced memories fly into your head and you know it's time for another session of the Enchanted Playground. All right, turn your screens back on. A little of the French cuisine. I was thinking of cooking music and I had to go to French cuisine. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, cool. Welcome back, everyone. Today. I hope you ate dinner. <laughs> yeah, right. If not, you may be getting a little hungry. And well, you might be a little more hungry afterwards. Although you might have seen with our title today is Love Instapot slash Love Hot Pot. We've kind of gone <laughs> back and forth on that one. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to kick over to Lee for, for the icebreaker. So, Lee, yeah. do you want to start us off here? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, um, as we, you know, Brandon and I were thinking about what we're going to do. Um, we were talking about ingredients <laughs> and ingredients, and somehow it turned into stories. So we thought about what are the ingredients for stories? They are words, right? So uh, Hannah and I play a game whenever I drop her off to school. We just uh, walk down the street and we, I say three words and she make a, a story with those three words. And then she say three words and I make a story with those three words. But, you know, and Brendan's like, oh my God, you're so creative to come up with all this, these words. And I'm like, no, we just look around and we like spot things. And so I will say like, 
windows, fire truck, and squirrel, you know? <laughs> so these are not random words. Those are things that is inspired by us looking out and walking down the streets. So um, I want you to think about today's whatever you did today, you know, you, you were not in one space. Well, even if you were in one space, you probably walked around the house and um, saw things. So I wanted to write three words that, that inspired by just to kind of going into your walk around today. Three words. All right. When you're done writing three words, can you give me a thumbs up? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Brandon, would you be able to put us, put us into the breakout room? Yes. So what we will do in a breakout room is Whoever it is has a longer hair will go first. <laughs> and then the person will say the three words and the partner will make a story with that three words. And then the partner will say the three words and you have to continue the story using the three words, the partner just to, so it's, it's, a, it's a story making, but um, doesn't have to make sense as we all know. Um, and then we're gonna come back. And we're gonna continue. So we have the three words to begin. I don't know if it finishes in you know, two minutes, three minutes, we're done. Otherwise you keep giving three words and making the stories until it's done. Um, three minutes, Brandon? Sure, you know? let's yeah. do it. <laughs> the random the randomness all right Is it really random this brought us together how how ironic uh, i just i put everyone in groups and since i'm the host didn't put me in a group i'm like i'm with quimby all right oh. <laughs> it just right. Put, put you in the last one so uh cool what are you what are your three words we'll start with that white mushy and bright wait what does it uh, say it again bright so uh, outside is white and mushy and i i live in a space that's basically it's an oct octagonal. What do they call it? The um, uh, I, I forgot. There's a, a word they call it. Um, and um, so it's always real bright in here, even if there's not any. Sun. Ah, okay, okay. Um, I actually like it when there's not sun because it's real bright without the sun pounding on me. So. Got it. Okay, so I think the way I think the way that Lee said this is supposed to work. So I'm supposed to make up a very short story. So I might say the the white. The white snowman was bathing in a mushy lake um, and was bothered by the brightness of the sun. And then I give you three words and then you continue. So my three words are splatter, cauliflower, and liquor. Wow. Okay. So uh, as he was splattering through the water in the shallow part of the lake, he saw a rowboat and he climbed into it and uh, started eating someone's leftover lunch of cauliflower and thankfully a touch of liquor. <laughs> I'm not big on random, random stuff, as you know. It's I like, don't know. I don't know. This was, this was an intriguing this is something Lee does with her daughters. We're like, I don't know. Let's try it out as an icebreaker. It, it's a good way to think, yeah. get out of the skin a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I think we're probably good there. Well, so we don't, so we don't keep going or no. Yes or no. I mean, we can, but okay. you know, I think, uh, I, I, we only have like 20 seconds left. So I want to make sure oh, I have, um, uh, okay. Like you gotta, yeah, you gotta orchestrate. Right, so, I know, and I didn't usually lead as the breakout, so... Well, I gotta think about dipping some cauliflower in an orange liqueur. Okay. It's interesting so we you said were... orange, orange liqueur. Oh, we got a few seconds. That's what left. occurs to me, sorry? No, it, but, and the reason I thought of it is I've been, I've been 
uh, having a, a like happy hour time, I have a Negroni, which is uh, like Aperol uh, and uh, or like a Campari or whatever. But it's kind of a very bitter. Uh, I think it's yeah, yeah. I think it's based on orange somehow. So good, good question on Campari. I can't remember what it's based on. Yeah, it's something like that. Maybe it's like watermelon. It's very bitter. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll see you back in the main room. All right, cool. Recording it. All right. Calculator. <laughs> Lee, what happened after you became part of the picture? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it makes me think of um, Mary Poppins, where they jump into the pictures on the sidewalk. Oh, I don't Stick know. I didn't back. watch. No. Oh, well, you're too young. To watch it. <laughs> yeah. There's a scene where they um, they see the sidewalk. People make pictures on the sidewalk, and they decide to jump into the picture, and then they're there in that scene. Oh, yeah. In my story, I was part of the grassland that uh -huh. picture somehow I got into. So, yeah. So I wonder what happened to your adventure. I, know, I don't know that you didn't give me three words. So, like, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> so, hopefully, your story of an adventure is as fun as mine and Michelle's. We met with a homeless person and um, we had a pig in the keychain and all that. <laughs> And we started off with making cookies cold by taking them out of the oven and going to the snow. <laughs> All right. Totally makes sense. So. We had, a, we had a snowman that had someone's lunch and drank some liquor. Uh, so it was, it was a good time. Uh, in, a ro in a rowboat of all things. In a rowboat. It wasn't a rowboat. Yes. Very important detail. We have Bob, to keep ours, that. Ours was so mundane. Yeah. Had I, a drunk junk drawer and coffee and a cat and drinking tea and coffee drinking tea and yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's just too 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 lifelike i'm afraid yeah <laughs> not nearly fantastic enough no oh, cool awesome as long as you have the cat drinking coffee i think it is fantastic enough we did no not. the cat was just sitting in the window <laughs> which is what the cat likes to do so was that a real cat or was that Sarah? No, it was a real cat. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because Sarah is a cat. Oh my, yes. You should see her latest her latest ears are very, very cat-like. Yeah. All right. So this gets us started in there's a little theme to this, the theme of ingredients. And the ingredients are our words. And so Today we're gonna to kind of delve into a an, an I don't know but this is this is experimental <laughs> to say the best but I we we know everyone here so I feel like at this point uh it, they usually are pretty experimental let's be honest <laughs> um so bear with us on this one um so we've got a mural bird board and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna break back into groups and Lee I'm actually gonna say let's stay in twos although okay. I think I'm just I'm gonna let it randomize I'm gonna let it randomize yeah. us um so we can kind of switch back and forth and just have some fun with it and. Yeah. But the whole theme of this is, you know, February is, is you know, it's it's Groundhog's Day, it's Valentine's Day. So the whole theme was kind of love. And the I thought is, you know, we have love for ourselves, <laughs> love for others. Uh, love in and out was, I think, was our initial thing. And somehow food got involved because let's be honest, we all love food to a certain extent. So we've got this Miro board and and uh, let me put it in the... Um, Oh, I see. Thank you, Lee, on the fly, making some changes there. And so what we want you, everyone to do is so we have some some pictures of recipes put up there. And so for every pair uh, of group, we want you to pick one of the recipes out there. It doesn't even have to be one of the images. The images are more for inspiration. But we want you to pick one of the recipes and think of four or five ingredients that would go into that recipe. However, what we want you to do is we want you to use those ingredients and turn them into metaphors for love in some way shape or form exactly how that makes sense <laughs> leave it up to you guys um and right so i who knows right maybe there's there's cheese or croutons or noodles or broth or whatever it might be and so i'm gonna have a, a bit of a guideline we're gonna try this and we'll, we, we'll see how it goes when we come back but for the odd group so groups one and three um i want you to focus on a recipe that makes love for others and for group two I want you a recipe that is love for yourself, loving yourself. 
And so the goal is four to five ingredients. And I'll put this in the chat because this is a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> four to five ingredients um, and bonus points if you have extra time. And I think we'll do, what do you think, Lee, like seven minutes? I'm going to say seven minutes is probably a good a good number. Yeah. Seven, seven yeah. minutes. Um, and we can check in. If there's more time, we'll throw it in the chat or something. But uh, we'll say seven minutes. And then bonus points if you can come up with, like, the cooking method. Like, you know, how is how is heat or cold or whatever applied to it, right? Is it a grill? Is it an Instapot? Is it a Crock-Pot? Is it a, a hot pot? Anything with pot in the name. Um, yeah. So does that feel, does that make sense? Recipe. Yeah. Let me get in the chat. I'm going to put it in real quick just so we don't have it here. Okay. So recipe for love. Groups uh, one and three. Groups odd. Uh, love for others. Or love or lovers slash outward. Uh, even inward self. Four to five ingredients. Made into metaphor. Bonus points for cooking method. Okay, let's experiment out randomizing groups now. I actually realized I never do breakouts in anything. Like I always have someone <laughs> else doing breakouts. Julie's like, do the breakouts. I'm like I. All right. And okay. here we go. We'll see you in Ooh. seven minutes. <laughs> oh. oh. Hey. <laughs> we didn't put the mural board in. It's just, oh, we didn't put the mural board. Not in the people. chat. Well, everyone, <laughs> everyone can see this yet. Yeah. No. Can they see it? Yeah. They'll yeah. be like, what? <laughs> All right. I'm going to hop into Meg. Hey. Hey, we just need the mirror board. I just put it in. Can you see it in chat? No. Oh, okay, let me do it again here. It I has think to I'm go in room by room. Awesome. Yeah. All Thank right, you. I'm going to the other one. Thank you. <laughs> now it's here. Yeah, it's I there. Know. We thought of it right as I'm like, oh. All right, next room. Let's see. Let me go to two. Oh, what? Nothing. Mirror board is in your chat. Sorry, I had to pop to every room and do it real quick. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is now Here in the go. chat. Again, more for inspiration and notes. Uh, cool. Thanks, okay. guys. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, no sweat. So, okay. Okay. I had to go to every room and give them the, <laughs> the mirror board yeah. individually. <laughs> yeah. oh, they got it. I can't minimize the, the Zoom if I'm recording. Oh, I've never done that before. Is that a setting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, ah, cool. I just shrunk the window down to real small. Okay. Yeah. All right. What should we got to pick a recipe? Okay. Well, we minutes. are on room, room three. <laughs> yep. We're so room we three. Use, we can just use whatever we have here. If you What's want. your, what is a favorite recipe? What's something like you love? Oh, I don't make it, but I know what I love. What is it? Um, so there is this thing called tteokbokki. Okay. Tteokbokki in Korea is a hot spicy rice um rice cake um so let me see if i can find the cookie well what are some what are some ingredients for that oh uh, rice cake okay rice cake which is <laughs> um, what rice and there's got to be some type of like is there like vinegar or other things in there no it's just the right it's like a it's just a, it's really rice okay uh, how do i describe it it's it's like a spaghetti but 100 times thicker Oh, okay, okay. Cooked spaghetti, hundred times thicker. Got it. Okay. Um, and then you can cut them into smaller pieces. So rice, uh, rice um, cake, and then uh, uh, fish cake. <laughs> so it's almost all the cake, but they're not really cake. So. But there's uh, fish what? Cake. There's got to be other ingredients. It's not like so. So the rice cake is literally just rice that's in a cake form. No, they're not. Let me see. They're not really. Um, They're not cake, but it's like yeah, it's like a. Yeah. yeah so like let me let together. me put let me put those um, copy image. I'm gonna put it into here. Okay, so here, you can see. Okay. You see, you see in the room three. With the noodles. 
it's not it's not noodle it, these are it looks oh. like a it's like a sauce it looks like sausage right okay so it's a very yeah. it's a large thick but what is that so what's made what is it made of what are the what are the rice. ingredients so it's all rice it's all rice but then okay. it's the the red part is uh -huh. not tomatoes it's actually um hot pepper paste oh hot pepper paste okay yeah sugar okay um green onions the so scallions oh yeah scallions i love scallions and an egg oh, like cooked yeah. egg cooked egg so mm -hmm. these are like um and then you can add some um sweet potato noodles mm. although this one does not have it um all right we're down yeah, to a minute and that's it how much we're, time we, we have we like just... a minute and a half yeah yeah <laughs> I might All broadcast right, so them. I might broadcast a message and be like, "Hey, we'll take take an extra few minutes here. I'm gonna broadcast a quick message because it's taking yeah. us this long just to list out ingredients. Yeah, yeah. it's a dish I've never heard of. So, uh, which it sounds delicious. I would like to to have it. Let's see. We got rooms. Broadcast message. All right, adding. All right, broadcast this message to rooms. Okay. So yeah. is there salt in there too? Um, I imagine salt, right? There's salt in everything. Well, it probably is in, included in the um, the spicy paste, but we don't okay. add salt to okay. it. Okay, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I just got done reading a, a book on cooking and salt is like major in most all cultures uh, and is delicious in general. <laughs> yeah. But we have, all right, so we have rice, we have hot pepper paste, we have sugar. We have green it's onions, rice scallions. cake. It's not rice. Rice it's cake. The, okay. Yeah. Well, it's made rice. of rice, though, right? It's made of rice. Yeah. <laughs> so this, so, this that okay. looks like a sausage. Is yeah. the rice? Okay. Okay. So we've got to get to metaphor making because we're we're yeah. kind of getting we're getting on the just the ingredient right. listing is taking. <laughs> right. um, okay. So the I think I, they are they are very um, chewy. So I think maybe for the metaphor, it is something that like. When you are together, you feel like you're kind of connecting with each other, you know. So ah, okay. for others, it's it's not like you're not crunch. It's not crunchy. It's very chewy and soft. Um, so maybe love love for others is connecting chewy, and connecting and soft. Um, spicy. <laughs> so I think I don't know if love for others is spicy. Um. Oh no, I think spicy hot pepper paste, is that where we're going? Yeah. I think that's emotions. Oh I think hot pepper paste has yeah. emotions, right? You yeah. need to be able you have to share the good and the bad. Yeah. Uh yeah. to have a loving relationship. Yeah. Something like that. Okay, sugar. I feel like sugar's <laughs> gotta be sweet, right? Sweet. <laughs> Balances out. Yeah. Or balance, it's a balances, balances things. Uh, so what would sweet be in a relationship? Would it be like kind words, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Kind words, um, maybe get gifts. I mean, gifts isn't, kind, kind words, and maybe just Something thoughtful. Sweet. Thoughtful, thoughtfulness. Yeah. Okay, green onion scallion. So we got some like this is like onion is like an acidity. Acid yeah. is like it creates like a yeah, like a lot of good things going on here. Um, yeah, I think so. For me, it's uh, something that's refreshing. You know, if I just have hot ooh, only, brightness, like, what was that? Like a brightness. Um, like refreshing. Like it's like a, at least in a food term. Yeah, something that that's just like um, that, that separates, you know, if it's all all sweet or all spicy, because those are all just taste. But when you uh, when you eat green onions, it has that like like refreshing. So like in the relationship, maybe this is something that um, new things sparks. Maybe huh? something that sparks. sparks. You know, yeah excitement yes yes okay awesome cooked egg i think i gotta i gotta do a minute left i gotta close the room and give people a minute okay yeah <laughs> all right take it start going through cooked egg what are you thinking cooked egg 
that is kind of like uh, dampens the spiciness. So if I'm eating just a spicy, um, the egg, especially the um, egg yolk, the cooked egg yolk, it um, dulls the taste a little bit. Mm. Maybe that's it's like opposite. like patience, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And then yeah. sweet potato noodles. I I don't know what to do with these. I'm, I'm confused here. <laughs> yeah. Um, they wrap around things. So they're like hugs. Yeah. <laughs> Hug. <laughs> Hug. I'm okay with it. I like. I don't know. Do you like this? What do you think? I do. I do. Okay. We, well, we didn't get the cooking method. Um. Oh, how are we cooking it? We got like ten seconds or something. Heat. Hot. Is it's on a pot, right? Pot on a stove. Yeah, in a pot. Yeah. Which is heat. Which is uh flame, open flame. <laughs> 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 okay, you I have no idea okay. what you guys made ours. <laughs> Did you have enough time? Like, do you need a few more yeah. minutes? Uh, we, I think we were we good. got a little lost in some of the details of trying to find out why we literally saw different images when we were on the board. Seriously? Oh, wow. Seriously. Weird. Like, okay. He, like, like David could see where my cursor was, and I was hovering over an image that looked to me like a a small personal pizza with one slice being removed and he saw a completely <laughs> different image of a pan with apples in it or something. Oh, oh you were on ours, I bet. I, I don't yeah. know. Because there's room one, room two. But then how could, if I'm hovering <laughs> oh, no. in room one, how could David see my name someplace else? I don't know. Oh, details, so Tech, technical yeah. details. It depends where you put the cursor. Where you put the cursor is where your name is. Right. Well, I have my. I have the cursor right here. And uh, and and David saw something else, and was like, "Okay." And what he described, I couldn't find. So ah. Uh, well, in any well, case, what uh, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> let's let's dig into it. What what did. What did you come? Well, let's start with you guys. We're already on room one here. Uh, I've got the screen share going on. What uh, what recipe did you did you choose? Uh, so, go ahead, David. So so we 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 uh, we couldn't set we couldn't see an image in common. So we said, well, let's invent one. Let's pick one of our own. And and Bob threw out pancakes. And I go, okay, we can explore those those ingredients. And then I threw out at the other end of the spectrum. Uh, a thing I do called Chicken Delight. That's my fantasized <laughs> name for it. And we got as far as the ingredients, which are chicken and rice, three kinds of soup, four kinds of soup, and cream. And then we were segue, you know, trying to segue into now how will we take those ingredients and uh, form them into some kind of a metaphor for love. <laughs> and that's where we kind of hit the hit the time wall. Oh, yeah, okay. So, Okay. All right. So no, I mean, like we were sprinting in our group too. So it was, yeah. we were kind of wondering, okay. All right. So maybe, maybe we'll go back. I don't know. Let's see. Let's move yeah. to room two. So we got chicken delight in room one with lots of soups. Uh, room two, uh, we got, there we got Megan and Michelle. Yeah. We actually couldn't figure out if the first one was a fajita or what exactly it was. So we're oh. just gonna go with it though. What, what, yeah. what was found? <laughs> yeah. And we were tasked with looking inward. Mm -hmm. So we decided that on the left, the one that's some kind of a whatever it is in the thing you're making, <laughs> or whatever it is, um, we figured that was was gonna be complementary characteristics that are in us, but yet they're mm. different, but they complement each other. So Megan said, "Sweet is apples, and savory is beef." And then I think I said with the heat of the spices, and then she said, "Well, it's all is, has to be, you know, cooked in something juicy, peppers and onions." Which we decided was the environment that allowed this complementary combination to flourish. In some environments, it might not, but in this warm, loving <laughs> environment, it was flourishing. And as you can see, we had some help from somebody there with a spoon. Oh. And you had the what's the orange posted? Yeah. Oh, so we did both recipes. Oh. <laughs> we were supposed to pick one. Were we supposed to pick one? We did two. That's fine. That's all right. 
<laughs> Walk us through number two. Yeah, so um, number two. So we said, you know, there's there's these shish kebabs and they they kind of are the the, the chameleons of our many selves um, uh, that we can yeah. we can take on, right? Um, and based on the environment, based off of who you are, you don't have to fit in a box. Um, we have, you know, the, they're they're cooked um, in a fire, and that can be sometimes the pressure um, and the persona of performing under pressure, which we said is, you know, sometimes characterized as a bad thing, but it doesn't have to be um, because you come out tastier and more seasoned. Um, and oh, then, I love that. <laughs> And then we talked about the condiments being our, you know, our freedom of choice um, and kind of a salve to treat ourselves at the end um, to celebrate our wins. And then we talked about kind of the, the vegetables around the side as maybe being those, you know, those things that we, we possessed that helped us along the way, but we maybe no longer needed. And so we sort of Marie condo them out. <laughs> so thank nice. you very much. And awesome. Yeah, I love the pressure cooker, um, pressure cooker thing, right? It's tough to go through, but when you come out the other side, you're more tender and seasoned, and oh, that's great. Lee, do you want to take the reins on ours here? We did did this this big dish. Okay, yeah. So Brandon yeah. actually did not want to do whatever was there, and he asked me like, "What's your favorite dish?" So um, I said, "It's tteokbokki." Tteokbokki is a spicy rice cake uh, soup, uh, whatever you want to call it. You can see it there. So um, the ingredient is rice cake that looks like the sausage. That's actually rice cake. Um, hot pepper paste. The the red soup that you see is the hot pepper paste soup. It's not it's not tomato soup. Um, and we add sugar, uh, green onions, cooked eggs, sweet potato noodles. Um, and the way we looked at it was uh, rice cake is very chewy. It's not crunchy. So we thought like to give love to others, um, we need to connect with others. You need to be chewy with each other. <laughs> it's, not, it's not crunchy. Uh, and then hot pepper paste, uh, you know, Brandon mentioned like that's emotions, you know, that's, that's how we feel. Um, so it's not just, yeah, yeah. Uh, so good and the bad um, to have a loving relationship for others and and maybe it will also apply to us is take it all in you know all that emotions um and sugar is something that's sweet so um to balance out the spicy we also need some kind you know kindness thoughtfulness and then green onions and scallions um when you add those things to any dish it adds that freshness um refreshing taste so those are the sparks and excitement in the uh, loving uh, relationship for others. Uh, cooked eggs, especially the, um, the egg yolk portion of it, it dampens the spiciness and we thought maybe that's the patience that we have for each other. Um, the potato noodle, um, it wraps around the rice cake, so we thought those are the hugs. And then part on the stove is uh, we haven't really gotten to, yeah. to that point yet. <laughs> time, time hit on that one. Ah, interesting. I, I kind of like how like all of us took slightly different angles on it. Um, outside of right our 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 Miro challenges going back here. So okay, so actually I want to let's let's put this out there. So the initial thought on this was to to flip it right is to have groups one and three do kind of love for self now, and group two do love for others. Um, however, I think we had a third option too, which like let's just go to dessert. <laughs> and let's pull out uh and again so the pictures are meant to be more like inspiration you can actually choose like whatever recipe you want um so either a we can kind of reverse it or b we could even reframe it and get maybe go a little bit bigger and say you know like how do we increase love in the world i don't know what do you what do you think there's only six of us here so like let's <laughs> what do you guys want to do so, this is a big experiment <laughs> What about like a combination of using the dessert as a catalyst for how do we increase love in the world? Okay. All right. I like okay. this. I like this. Okay. So we're going to use the d dessert as a catalyst to increase love in the world. We'll do the same type of thing. We'll, we'll 
take out, you know, what are what are the ingredients and feel free to make some stuff up too. I feel like, well, let's just have a little fun with this one. Um, and also if you want to change pictures, change all of whatever you guys want to do. Um, but I would say, I think we learned from the last round, I think pick the recipe in the first minute <laughs> <laughs> and then go from there. Cause I think Lee, I know Lee and I went over like, I'm like, what's spicy rice cake for like, there's at least three and a half minutes of explanation on that one. Um, <laughs> I get it now, but I was a little dense uh, in, in what was going on there. So, all right. So let's take, um, let's take, we'll do eight minutes and then we'll, we'll kind of, yeah, we'll come back and, and see where we are. All right. So breaking out again. Let's see. I'm still sharing my screen. There we go. Same mirror board. Let's, I'm going to reshuffle. Let's reshuffle. <laughs> All right, and here we go. No. Bob. Brandon. Hey, Bob, how are you? So delightful. Oh my gosh. All right, so we're room three now. Okay. So I can see you, can you see me? I'm not Brandon, I'm something else. I'm. Um, Whatever. You're visiting Thinker or something? Yeah, sure. I don't okay. use, I always use Mural. Uh, they also, yeah, I'm just used to them, but same thing. All right, so I think these are like fruit tarts up here. I would, I think, I don't know. What do you like? What's your dessert of choice? You know, the, the first thing that came to my mind was you need something universal. Okay. Because if you're, if you're going to put love in the world, you got, you know, and, and this is tricky because if you grow up with something, it can seem wonderful, but other people can be put off by it. Okay. You know, you could grow up with a fish dish that somebody else would say, no way. Yeah. But I was, I was trying to think of what's more universal. I was thinking if you have like a variety of ice cream oh. and, and just because I'm thinking universal, it's got to be not just different flavors, but you could have like a soy alternative for vegans so you have your your frozen your semi-frozen base i found an image and and then the the key is you the toppings it's like you you just put oh! out an array of like my daughter loved going to this place near us called yogurtini and you picked out whatever flavor of yogurt you wanted and they told you what flavors they were and the machine would dole it out and then you go up and you drop toppings on it and they weigh it out and they tell you how much to pay based on the weight. You can put anything on it. You can put, you put nuts, you can put sprinkles, you can put Swedish fish, you can put um, oh, M&Ms, you can put malted milk balls, you can put almost anything on it you could imagine that they, they had a really broad uh, selection of options. So I'm thinking that it's a do your own Sunday, you know? So, okay. I'm just, I'm kind of typing here. And so feel free to like, like, uh, so I'm pulling out some themes, right? So I put ice creams, I got frozen right. base, which is one of the main ingredients, but it could be various right. dairy, soy, right. Uh, right. oat. I put, I was going to put sweet. I know you can have savory ice creams, uh, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe we say, I'm just going to type sugar in. I think you also have a base. Is it a cup? Right. Is it a cone? Is it Oh, a... I wasn't even thinking of that. Usually it's a, it could be a cone. I usually personally like a cup just because when you get a oh. cone, you got to be really prepared to deal with something Man. dripping down your fingers. But it's still like it's an option, right? And then you have toppings. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cup or cone, your choice. You know, cup, you got to throw something away. Cone, you just got to watch out for your fingers, but you finish the whole thing usually. Okay. And then, so because I want to get to like four or five, I kind of want to put a scoop with care. I want to put like the, the love of like, like the, the, the making it right. Someone's putting right. this together. Generally, you generally don't serve yourself ice cream. Um, right. And, um, uh, okay. So now how do we make these into metaphors? So oh, we got, um, right, Cause they're all, we have variety. I think we've got variety. So maybe that's the toppings, right? Whatever you like. Right. Like everyone gets their own, uh, everyone respects. Everyone shares the, 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 respects um, others, the assembly area, if you will. The assembly area is free from judgment. Yes. Oh, this is freedom from judgment. There we go. It's free there from judgment go. and all accepting. 
Right. I like this because I you said Swedish fish and I'm not going to lie. I cringed a little bit. But you know what? Hey, and I, I don't get it either. My daughter would pick gummy worms. I and was like, really? I it's tried like, that once. It's not good. It, it's your it's your option. <laughs> OK. And, all right. We've got topics, but we have four other ingredients, right? So we've got the base. We've got the frozen base, which is more of the frozen base of the ice cream itself. We've got kind of like the sugar and then the scoop. Uh, and I'm happy to change any of these at all. Oh, I'm um, just kind of then, these out. And you've got um, sauces. You is can, that part you of can... toppings? No? Mm, it's a little bit different only okay. in that. You know, you can, you can all right. I get out. it in the ice cream world. How, how? So what would you? What would be a different metaphor for sauces then? Is that maybe like... Like I'm trying to think because we have to make these into metaphors, right? So like, right, 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 right. So we got like um, two lost in the ingredients themselves. Yeah, um, I'm thinking because um, the sauces are, are are like they they're, they're kind of like tying things together a little bit. Oh, okay. So yeah, and and they give you they they give you the option to really to 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 help blend things. Because like your your frozen stuff is cold and your toppings tend to be room temperature, but the sauces can often be sometimes they're hot, you know, like hot fudge, it. and and it gives you a chance to sort of use it as sort of like a a, a unifying uh, medium. Yes, I love this unifying medium. All right, that's we nailed it. Um, okay, I want scoop with care. I just want to say the effort to bring other people like joy. Right, everything to bring other people joy and happiness. Well, uh, I, I, would, I think that's the scoop, right? I think some, I, because I, I imagine this is. I'm just saying there's a labor. I'm, I'm adding labor as an element. I don't know why. Kind of. Okay, like, I'm, I'm gonna say as long as you're going for metaphors, I'm gonna say this is about bringing out people's creativity. Okay. Because when you have the wide array of options for toppings and sauces, and even the bases themselves, people start to get creative. People start to try new things. It's like I've never had mango, strawberry ice cream or frozen yogurt. I wonder what that would be like with, you know, uh, mocha chip or something. I don't know, but you you, you get people that can that can try things, that can experiment, that can okay. cross cultural boundaries because you know it's it's dessert. You can make it whatever you want it to be. All right, so we've got about a minute left with three more ingredients. And I just kind of put that as the overall, right? Unearthing oh. creativity and experimentation and play. Uh, um, it's a lot. I know I've added. Well, technically, one, two, three. We just have the sugar, which we could actually delete some of these two. I think we have enough of uh, we could delete. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you could, in theory, separate something out like fruit as opposed to a topping, like a banana split features a banana so you could add fresh fruit as an option that's more than a topping but it's not the base how is that different metaphor though wise like i, I get it like we could we could um, splice toppings in 20 different categories but are we adding right. different creativity are we so so the so, fruit is kind of is kind of like we... grounding it a little bit in the sense of everything is 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 like sugar overload but the fruit is more like there's still sugar in it, but there's also a certain element of health. There, there's a a more um, it, it's trying to balance things out a little bit. But that would, would that wouldn't go on everyone's ice cream though. That would just be another potential option. Right, exactly. It, it's like you can you can decide if you want to balance out your dessert, you can go for more fruit. If you want to go all in on sugar crash, you can ignore it. But Again, it, it reinforces the exploration. We have a minute left. Um, okay, we can add that, but I think that's still subtopping because it's not for everyone, right? Um, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, we're, I think we're, we're in the topping world. Um, I, I, so let's go back to frozen base because that was something you started with, right? You right. got dairy, you got soy, you got oat. So like it's a base, right? This is like a core component of making it up. Uh, yeah. There's variety the there. Yeah, we already theory. have a metaphor for variety, which is kind of our toppings and our sauces a little bit. Although sauces are more unifying. Yeah. Toppings is about variety, free from judgment, all accepting. Um, fruit is options for health. Health, okay. Um, so what about frozen base? Could it be? There could be health there. There could be cultural. Uh, respective cultures, respective background, maybe. Um, 
Well, yeah, I, I suppose depending upon where you're coming from, you're you've got you, you know. Weird thing happened. A weird thing happened in my breakout room. Megan just disappeared. What? She, yeah, it was like it kind of like near the end, but she, well, she maybe she got, when, she may have disconnected. She may she um, may have lost her connection to the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, she was gone. Let's see. I'll keep an eye mm. out for her to get back in. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, she rejoins. All right. Were you? Is everyone else frantically going at the end? I don't know. I feel like I was in the same same bot, same spot as last time. We're like, ah, <laughs> oh, but it's six fifty, so I think we we have time yeah. to, to share. Yeah. Uh, all right. So group one, I'll do share screen again. And oh, there's Megan. Megan. <laughs> there you are. Where'd she go? <laughs> I guess hey, Megan, you disappeared. What happened? <laughs> Signal drop. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start um, with room one. We're back. Oh, okay. What did... All right, so who's room one? I didn't even see who... Yeah, it was Dave and me. Oh, okay. Awesome. So what did you guys go with? Go ahead, Dave. So... Uh, we went crazy. Thanks for capturing everything, Lil uh, Lee. Um, so this, the notion of it's it's stepwise. Uh, that the steps in the cakes are, are in the cake are pretty prominent. And our analogy or metaphor was that it's a stepwise process, kind of gradual, um, not all at once, not big bang, not boil the ocean, uh, but starting somewhere and moving. Um, frosting. I told Lee how I. I like to eat the frosting first. Um, so uh, it's sort of the notion we talk about the frosting on the cake, right? And so like the, the notion of the silver lining and that it, it, it would draw us in. There is, there's form and substance and that would uh, uh, draw us in underneath is the cake. Um, the triple berry, you know, berries are so nutritious. I eat lots of berries. They're so, uh, have lots of antioxidants and they're delicious as well. Um, and so we, we were in the notion of the triple berry and the analogy to diversity um, and, and nutrition. Um, uh, uh, I think I want to let Lee talk a little bit, though. Or no, what? Lee, do you want me to keep on? Continue on. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, sure. Um, I, I made a distinction around diversity. Sometimes we get um, sort of focused on just certain types like uh, gender and ethnic, and I expanded to uh, cognitive and intellectual diversity, I think, which produce um, richer thought process and and therefore would bring us into more experimental uh, thought, you know, thought experiments, richer thought experiments, experimental thinking. Maybe I'm stretching there, <laughs> trying, to work, trying to work with the uh, metaphorical concept. Um, we noticed that we have two types of of, of sugar. We've got the, the, the natural sugar in the berries and the um, and the uh, artificial sugar probably in the in, in the frosting and cake. And so again, another aspect of the multiple forms that can can get in integrated in the whole. Um, and 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 uh, that sort of being the key to unleashing, uh, you know, love at a global level is integrating the, all the different types of forms and structures. Um, I, I, I noticed the ridges on the edge of the cake, which I thought were pretty cool. I was really struggling to get to any form of analogy or metaphor. Maybe maybe Lee has something in that regard. Um, and uh, not sure I got, I've got anything else. Uh, did I miss anything, Lee? No, you got it. I think, you know, when we spread love, it's always good to bring some art into, uh, into the, the scene. So I thought the ridges were kind of, the visual impact, uh, when we think about art, of course, there are many different ways of doing it, but at least uh, something visual that could, you know, strike the um, the love cat catalyst part. So that's I it. like it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. Very cool. We'll have a stretch on some of those fronts, but we're <laughs> doing it. Fun of it. We can, we can we're do doing it. it. Yeah. All right. Room two. Um, you want to go first, Megan? <laughs> Did you get random, randomly paired together twice now? I think, yeah, yeah, we did. Um, <laughs> so I can't, I got, I got like booted, like booted <laughs> off the internet, trying to restart my computer. I am oh, like no. booted, booted. So I can't <laughs> see anything. So oh, I no. will add flavor, but like you can go ahead. 
Michelle. Okay. All right. So we had, at first we just kind of looked at it and we tried to pick apart what the ingredients were. And there, there's the first little note there. Strawberries, whipped cream, icing, white chocolate. We thought the little drizzle was white chocolate. non pareils, mm. or what do you call those little small sprinkles? They're round. Um, so we call them non pareils because I remember that's what I see on the bottle when I buy it. Uh. And then we talked about the foundation, which is the cupcake itself, which has flour and sugar. And we talked about egg and other things. But then we started to make metaphors about that. And we said, well, the making the cake um, is a couple of things, the cupcake part. And it is a combination of having a joint project where you need a lot of cooperation. So you need someone to have cows, so you can have milk, someone to do the chickens, you can have eggs and the flour, you have to grow the in the field. And all that's all cooperative, you know, everyone is making this together. And when they make it and they got this thing, this is the thing they planned on making. But then they said, let's make things a little bit better and sweeter. And so what that's called, like your icing on the cake, kind of very similar to, you know, group one, <laughs> kind of very um, went on that sort of thing. And we said same thing that they said, you know, about some things being nutritious and some not. So it's sweet, but one thing is good for you. And one thing isn't the strawberry is good. It's in the sunshine and it sort of you know, absorbs the sun. It gets vitamin C. So we said that's world health, you know, increasing health because of that. But on the other hand, then we talked about how we transform bitterness into sweetness in the world. So we take a, a nib from the chocolate. And by the time we get done with it, it's totally unrecognizable as that white <laughs> chocolate <laughs> uh, drizzle that we put on the cupcake. Um, let's see, what else did I forget to say? The cooperation, let's see the ingredients. I got that. Let's see extras, things like frosting. I think I got everything. Did I miss anything, Megan? Oh, I the don't think so. um, what let's, see. The, um, let's see, abundance, the abundance and the shoot off. Let's see, I can't read it. Lots of vines thrive in the sunshine. Yeah, there was a little bit I missed about the strawberries, how, you know, the vines and how it was um, the shoots off the vine and the abundance and how that mm -hmm. kind of is a metaphor for people too. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Oh, great job, you guys. Cool. All right. Well, we'll head up next here. Um, Bob was the visionary for this. I got to give, I mean, Bob, Bob I'm going to let you talk. I just let you know Bob was like, we need something like, like just like everyone can kind of get into. And there's tons of variety. And so we're like ice cream. And so Bob, I'm going to throw it over to you. So yeah, it's, it's if it's going to be like a universal for others, I thought it had to be something where you can accommodate almost any taste. And I was thinking of the way you can set up like an ice cream station. And there used to be a place um, pre-COVID near us that my daughter loved going to. It was called Yogurt Teeny. And you had these different machines with different flavors of this soft frozen delight. And some of it's frozen yogurt, some of it's ice cream. And they're different flavors. And you just get a cup or a cone, whichever you prefer, weigh out as much as you want. Or you just take as much as you want. They weigh it at the end. And then it's all about the toppings. So you have your base, that's your foundation where you can choose and you've got to be able to accommodate, you know, if someone's lactose intolerant, if someone's a vegan, you go with soy option, but you have a base that you build on and you can you can put toppings on it. The toppings are, are crazy. I mean, they, they, you can put Swedish fish on it. You can put gummy worms. <laughs> you can, I'm not kidding. Uh, malted milk balls, M&Ms, crushed nuts. Uh, fruit, whatever you want. And then you also have the sauces. And I like the sauce because like a hot fudge for a Sunday, you can get like a, a, a literally a hot sauce that helps tie things together and really brings oh. the kind of universal connection to it. But you have the flexibility so that anyone can come up and find something. And because you have such a great variety of things, people can explore. People can say, oh, I never tried mango and strawberry. I wonder what that tastes like. Ooh, I've never had an op opportunity to try like mocha chips, whatever it is, you can experiment with it. You can, you can put it in a, a cup if you want to really just sit down and relax and take your time. Or if you're on the go and you want to be able to keep going, you can grab a cone um, and just really allow people to, to try things out, to, to sort of cross-reference stuff across cultures. I was just thinking right when we ran out of time, I know, when I used to go to Chinatown Ice Cream Factory, which if you get the chance, definitely go to it. It's amazing. 
they're flavors I never think of, like green tea and, and red bean. And they're amazing. But I would never think of those for ice cream until I found this place that I never thought of China culture and Chinese culture and ice cream. But there it is. One of yeah. the most amazing ice cream places I know. So um, I, I think that's, you know, the gist of it. Brandon, yeah. did I miss something? or? Yeah, I, I think just adding in. So we did layer in some of the metaphors, right? So ice cream in general, the whole idea was unearthing creativity and experimentation and play in everyone, which would help kind of bring joy and love. And right when people are doing those types of things and they're all able to, um, they're generally a lot happier. Uh, the frozen base, like the various dairy, soy, oat, whatever you might like, was really the understanding of others' backgrounds and foundations. Um, the the toppings, we didn't get to sugar. Toppings, that whatever you like, um, really was the whole, you know, free from judgment and all accepting of whatever else, right? Whatever you do. If you want gummy bears on your ice cream, mm -hmm. I might think it's foolish, but you know what? Hey, eh, good on you, right? <laughs> and uh, the sauces, the thing with the sauce was it's about pulling everything together, right? It was about unifying. And so the sauce takes the topping, if it's hot, if it's cold, and it kind of blends everything together. And it's that unifying piece. So that was kind of how the, the metaphor was there. And then I, I wanted this was all mine on the end. I realized like pushing Bob on it. Uh, I wanted the label, the, the labor, the scooping was the <laughs> effort to bringing out other people's joy and happiness. Because I think that um, if someone else is making this for you, right, there's that it takes a little bit of effort. It takes a challenge and it takes a step uh, to to help create that that kind of love and joy yeah. in the world. So, uh, so yeah. yeah, that's our, our thing. Uh, yeah. Yay. So I know we're fast time. If anyone needs to jump, I mean, feel free. I don't know. How was that? What did you think? It was super experimental. Thank you for playing along. Awesome. Uh, Lee and I were like, I don't know. Let's figure it out. Obviously. It was just what I needed today. <laughs> oh, good, Michelle. So good. good. I, I, I do have to jump up before I go. I would just suggest that the really nice fundamental element of what we just did is it directed everyone's attention to something positive in a creative way so we're all focused on something we like and i think that's fantastic and that that's something really important to recognize it's very valuable especially these days so thank you yeah. i'm thank I'm you happy, bob thank you happy to be here and i'm sorry i gotta jump but i gotta jump see yeah we all bob. gotta jump <laughs> good to see you all right well thanks everyone any other thoughts thank feel you. free to send them uh yeah good yeah. good to see everyone and play and, and just take an hour of levity in in yeah. uh in our times great session great talk, Brandon. Thank you. this is great all right <clears throat> bye yep. see you guys bye my, my quick thought brandon is um yeah i, I was i was going to comment that um <clears throat> i'm as you know we both share uh a zest for analogical thinking or analogous thinking whatever you like metaphorical thinking and yet it's it's um it was it's interesting to think of like i can think of all sorts of like analogies for all sorts of things but but to say but to put a uh, a target out there and say well take this ingredient <clears throat> and <clears throat> identify an analogy to like love for example i realized well that's an it that's a different twist on analogical thinking so and i realized that's uh it's just it's got me thinking a little bit because one of the one of the comments i have out of the one i just reviewed where we started uh exchanging some commentary on it is one of the thoughts that came up is i want to talk to you further about analogical thinking because and it wasn't directly in there but like i say like i said it it was a catalyst you know you know how it works it's like a catalyst gets your yeah. mind thinking about other things it's and it, it for, for some reason it brought up the notion of analogical and how it fits in both <clears throat> maybe systematic and unsystematic you know and is it a bridge between those two and um uh so it's interesting here we're doing like analogical thinking and metaphorical thinking and um i just i i was finding it challenging at some point to go i can usually think of all sorts of and they're, they're usually thinking of me they're usually coming at me i i don't have to sit and think of analogies they usually like occur to me left and right and this was a little bit interesting i'll have to think about what what's different about when we say well yeah. form an analogy for like this thing i'm going oh well i don't know that's that's a little harder. So anyway, yeah. gonna... no, great insight. And I, I'd love to dissect that at some point. I think that there's a point of, and one of the things that I love about working with Lee on these is like, I would never design the session on my own. Never in a million years. Right. But like, for some reason, when I work with Lee, she has such a different view on things and somehow 
right we play with this on like how do we take and apply the idea and the use of metaphor and take the theme which just february was honestly was just kind of love i think it worked out really well with the events of today and timing um because there's you know there's a positivity to that but then also take a unifying element like food right we all have food and like food and we all want to want to right enjoy love but then to try to have like you said forced metaphor which is an interesting like decomposition of elements then right well what is what does a Regina cake do? What does a strawberry mean? What is a, and then to see how other people pull out things you would never think of. Like, I mean, Michelle, when you talked about the vines on the, on the strawberries, I was just like, oh yeah, I didn't even thought about that. Like, that's so, that's such a cool way to like, my head didn't go there. Um, but there's so much power in, I think there's some metaphor and analogy and like, there's such a, I think we use it a lot more than we think we do in general uh, understanding and communicating that I think, yeah, being on purpose with it is, and, and this is kind of a cool way to like just bend our brains. That, I don't know. In a well, fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think this was an exercise in how to think out of the box. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Very cool. I, mean, I really think that was what it encourages. And a little, hopefully, so hopefully a little bit of laughter. I know I was smiling yeah. and goofing quite a bit. Yeah. It's it. energetic. Oh, it's all it's, very positive. It, yeah. It, it's lively. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it, it might get us thinking about what is the nature of metaphor and analogy. A lot of times we're thinking, we're not saying, oh, here's a cake, come up with a metaphor for it. We're, is it that we're doing it like the opposite? We're going, well, here's this thing and I want to explain it. And so let me give you a metaphor for it, you know? And, um, and I don't know if we were like doing, doing things backward you know there, there was a star trek episode Marvel. about that once i don't know if you recall it they, they went to the civilization where they like basically spewed out this whole story to describe a thing ah. and like they couldn't understand the language until they finally figured it out it was a m metaphorical universe huh. it was a planet or something i got to find that episode now <laughs> yeah it's interesting to look to look at it in this context anyway uh, three cheers for analogical thinking and, and metaphorical awesome. thinking and uh different ways of, of using it because it awesome. does it does unleash it does unleash the unexpected which is the goal so cool yeah. well, thank and you it was guys the thank same you kind of light bulb it went off in the guy's head at the end of the episode when they finally figured out the key yeah like and they started talking in these metaphors and they were understood but before then it was like the tower of babel nobody could understand each other it was, oh my gosh you oh, just used metaphor by the way the tower of babel that's a metaphor you know it's like oh but we're yeah. like working backward we're start we're not saying here yeah, here's that's, here's a tower come up with a metaphor for it we're saying here's a situation oh tower of babel would be a metaphor i don't know if you guys metaphor. resonate with that notion yeah. but does we have teams inverted from you the way we perfectly Metaphor. that's exactly what was going on on that planet exactly yeah. they would start telling the story about what had happened to describe a thing it was exactly that just like we did so yeah. interesting <laughs> i gotta run well, anyway, thank nice you much bye. great to see both of you and yeah i can't wait till the next one all right see you talk soon bye.